what's up everybody welcome to another great episode of the four times dope podcast i'm one of your hosts kisharo and i'm joined by my brothers jamie kwame and jermaine ladies and gentlemen tonight we have a special guest in the house um you may remember her from some of the 90s tv shows such as martin Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Hang With Mr. Cooper, just to name a few. You may have also recognized her on Deaf Comedy Jam and Martin Lawrence's First Amendment stand-up. But what most of you may remember her from is being one of the flyest sisters on the 90s hit show, A Different World. She was the sassy, beautiful, <laughs> I just one of the flyest chicks on TV back then to me anyway. Wow. Please give it up for Miss AJ Sanders. Wow. AJ, yeah. Clap, clap. <laughs> well, I, guess. Well, I, guess. I wish I had known that I was that fly back then, but better late than never, I guess. <laughs> no. Every day, yeah. every day I pulled up to work, I was just trying not to get fired, yo, for real. <laughs> I was like, Lord, please let me be funny and let them not cut this out. You know, that's what I was concerned about, but thank you. Yes, you, you did your job. So thank you for being here. We appreciate you being here. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, my crew, I need to ask y'all a few questions. I was talking to my daughter the other day. Mm -hmm. She's 10. And just giving her advice about different things. And, you know, we was all there one time. And she was looking at me like, why are you telling me this? You know, <laughs> so I was looking at her back as I'm looking at her tell me this. And I'm like be appreciative of the advice that me and your mom give you because one day you're going to wish you had somebody to tell you these things because I know I did plenty of times throughout my childhood. But my question to you guys is what would you now, where you are now in your life, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? Uh, mm. AJ, since you're our lady of the evening, I'm going to kick it to you first. What would you tell 20 year old AJ? First of what all, that's offensive to call. First of all, that's offensive to call me a lady of the evening, damn it. <laughs> that is right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm a lady of the night or something. I'm a church boy. Church child. Wow. Just start off. Please forgive me. No, no. I'm going, no, no. Seriously. No. Uh, let me be serious. Um, 20 year old self well my 20 year old let's see what was i doing at 20 lord that's been a long time ago uh let's see when i was 20 it was 1987 so uh what i would tell her is that you are enough mm -hmm. and i would also teach her how to manage money better mm -hmm. yeah the sound of place you know, I would, I really would have. I would have been. I would have shown her how to invest and um and and show her how to respect the science of money making and money uh, investing because I think that that's where we. You know, I I, I was making money back then and uh, I wasn't even acting yet, but I was uh I was I had a regular job that I made really good money at and um I didn't know what to do with it. And then I think I got my first commercial, I think I might have been around 21. Mm -hmm. And I had made more money than any of my family had ever seen. Right. Mm -hmm. like, collectively. Like yeah. nobody in my family collectively had made that much money in 20, in like, what is it, 13 weeks that I made in just one commercial. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, back in the day, if you guys remember, like, um, television was quite different where... Uh, when you they had a special offer they would run that thing all the oh. like every 20 40 minutes mm. in every city in every region every uh state yeah. so like man i mean it was cool i had and i remember i had called one of my actress friends at the time and i said uh oh, my first residual check was like oh wow my Forgot first residual checks was like five figures Oh. Wow! Oh, wow. I, and I called wow. her up and I was like, I was like, what do I do with this? She said, well, first you want to put it in the bank. <laughs> and I was like, okay, yeah, that's, you know, and so I, I just, I would have taught her how to um, handle that a little bit better because um, 
I had a lot of fun in my twenties, needless to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was it was a, it was the kind of fun where I wish I had been a lot more smart, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. I understand yeah. that. I like that. Cool, cool. Kwame, what would you tell twenty year old Kwame? Um, I, I think I would have told myself to network. I, I didn't find the value of networking and, and then understand it until I got a little bit older. And I, and I usually tell a lot of younger people like my, um, my younger, you know, siblings and other, you know, younger relatives that come, like going to college and going to school, um, you know, make sure you meet people. Cause like a lot of times those things open up op- other opportunities for you. Definitely. Um, and I think, so, you know, so yeah, that would be my, my advice to myself um, 20 or something years ago. Okay, cool. Jermaine? Oh, man. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm, you know, what I'm sitting here thinking now. Um, Kwame just took a part of my answer, which is networking. Um, mm-hmm. Like tangible, tangible networking is, is, is paramount. And um, because you get a chance to filter um, certain types of energy away from your circle. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you have that negative energy. You have the folks who are rooting for you, the ones who are really not. But also, too, I think I would tell my 20-year-old self that being a professional athlete is not the only means of having a great living. Because at 20 years old, I just had to leave. You guys know I had the league on my mind, and Mm -hmm. that was just it. And I think think it didn't hit me until I was like 22, 23, like, yeah, this may not happen. (laughs) And that may have been the the best thing. thing. I probably didn't need to be 21, 22 moving how well mentally moving how I was at the time Mm -hmm. making a great deal of money um but I think just looking beyond I would tell myself at 20 look beyond where you are and extend Mm -hmm. your network and you know make sound connections and network um and you'll you know you'll be all right so yeah yeah. sounds good I like that all right Mr. Jamie Patterson what about you sir I would tell my 20 year old self get a passport sooner mm-hmm. than later because I got my passport at 30 oh. and that was 10 years too late for me because I have missed out on a lot of trips that I could have been taking just mm-hmm. out of sheer ignorance and fear like I don't know where I'm going well but that's our culture then, that's our culture that's right? our culture right, right? I, be younger right my first plane ride was in 2000 with y'all we went to Miami, Miami I'm yeah. thinking I'm thinking America is enough I never thought of a passport until one of my frat brothers was like, look, man, we keep going to the Bahamas without you. And what's your excuse? And my excuse at the time was, I have to stay close to my business. And that was the dumbest answer I've ever given. I've got more business just from being in the Bahamas in the in in the ocean, hanging out with the bros in one fell swoop than I would in the office. And that was just, I had no answer for it. So I would tell 20 year old Jamie, look, bro, get your passport today and go see the world. Cause it's relative at that time, clearly it was relatively inexpensive. Yeah, make now it's still relatively inexpensive. You can go to mm-hmm. Nassau or you can get on a cruise ship and get busy. That's right. But exactly. I have been a world traveler since we got on that first plane ride, like getting across the country. But when I finally got out the country, boy, I was on it. So and listen, when you travel abroad, it, it mm-hmm. does something to you. It it, yep. it increases your grind, man. You know what right. I mean? It really it really it, it puts things in perspective when you can place the backdrop of a different country against where you're from. And when you come back, it's like none of that shit matters. Like anything you're going matters. through, it's just it's minute, right? So yep. I like that answer. If I can add to that, uh, I I like that that answer because the first time I went um, abroad was I want to say it was like 1995. That Mm -hmm. was the first time I had gotten one. And Mm -hmm. um, that's when I really knew. That's when I started to really understand that uh, like how 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 um, I want to say how uh, we don't like we we're 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 programmed a certain way. Yes, we like, are. For instance, I, I met a I met a comedian there. I went there to do a show with D.L. Hughley and um, Robin Montague, and we had we did ten ten nights there, ten shows there, and it was 
unbelievable. Like to see Buckingham Palace and went to London, mm. right? And we rode on mm. the, I mean, it really, it does, it, it just opens you all the way up. Yeah. And it mm. really does broaden your scope of who yeah. you are, not only of the world, but who you are and what your perspective is. And I remember when I went to Jamaica, I had, it really opened me up on another level there. I just mm. went deeper because I saw my people in a different way. But I remember I had met some people from Brixton and I met this comedian named Richard uh, Blackwell. And he was like the Chris Tucker uh. of London. And uh, his cousin or uncle, one of the two, one of his relatives was, remember that singer Junior? Yeah, mm. Junior from um, England. Right. Well, yeah. that was his relative, I think cousin okay. or uncle. And his uncle has schooled him about what America was all about. Uh -huh. And this was around the time that of the OJ thing too, the OJ trial. Okay, yeah, Everybody yeah. Was talking about it. And they knew nothing about it. Wow, that's Nobody crazy. Had we thought anything. everybody was like, so what do you think about? Like everybody was talking about that. And everything, and I realized after speaking to him and a few other people, everything, the only conversation I had was that of that my little small world that I was living in. Mm -hmm. Like I had yeah. nothing else to, I, I wasn't curious about anything more. I was just kind of like, my conversation was so one dimensional. Yeah. This and, is I thought, and I thought, wow, okay. And then I said, well, you gotta come to LA. You gotta come to me because he was so funny. Such a great comedian. And I was like, you gotta come to LA and come to America. And then he was like, Oh no, I would never come to America. Never. <laughs> he said he wasn't interested after what his uh, cousin uncle had told him. He mm -hmm. said, no, I'm good. Like, like we think this is like the only spot. Like this is yep. it. Uh, it's yep. not. It's, it's a huge not. world. Nah, I actually wanted to world. I actually wanted to move there. Uh, okay. I was like, well, you know, AJ, like so you, did I. I. So yeah, did I. right. <laughs> so I wanted to move there, but the only thing that kept me from going was because my mom was still here. Yeah, that's the thing. Can't but leave, I didn't can't realize leave. I could have, I had enough money. To I take her with you. Her too. <laughs> I would have taken her with you. Right. So, but I felt the same way in 2014 when I went to Australia. Mm -hmm. You guys have got to go to Australia. Say less. I'm going to put it on the list. Say <laughs> They love and respect us so much. That was the mm. first time I had never experienced a hint of racism. Wow. How does that uh, feel? Yeah, it's funny you say that, AJ. That's crazy. Because um, my dad was in the Navy, and he used to talk about when they used to go to Australia and how a lot of these families down there would open up their homes and cook for the sellers, and they love, love Black people. So yeah. you saying that it reminds me of what he used to tell us, tell tell him, you know, my family when he used to go down there to, you know, when he was in the Navy and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, it's almost as if they look at you and go, We get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and we're sorry and we get it. You know what I mean? We understand, so come on. But they really I mean, it felt like at first it was kind of off putting because I was I was ready to, you know, you got your little barriers up, you're kind of got your defenses you up. Back. You know, for the, and uh, it's just you, you can you can just feel it in people's the way they look at you, the way they smile at you, the way they talk to you. They're not talking at you. Mm -hmm. And it was I love tennis, so I went there during the Australian Open. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and so I, you know, I, I called myself trying to wear like a tennis skirt, trying to fit in with you know the athletes, <laughs> and they all thought I was a tennis player. Yeah. Oh, you play up, you know? And I was like. I could have lied and said, yeah, but I was like, no, I'm, you know, I'm just here to watch. But they were just very engaging and very, they're just kind people, man. I mean, don't, I mean, a lot of times people go, well, you know, they races everywhere. Well, you got to see for yourself. You got to yeah, see for true. yourself. Right. That's, true. that's cool. That is true. Okay. Sure about you? For me, um, what I would tell my 20-year-old self, because I dealt with so much as a child, you know, like some of the traumas and stuff I went through, I would tell myself, you will get through this. Like you are a strong person and just continue to fight, you know, and don't look back. You know, like I said, that's something my grandma always told me, don't look back, just always look forward. So at the time I heard it, but I would definitely tell myself that at 20 and I would definitely embrace that. Like mm -hmm. you will overcome, you know, all your obstacles you've been through. So that's what I would tell myself. Um, 
But so AJ, you mentioned OJ Simpson. So speaking of OJ, you know we got that's this a hell of a segue, dog. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> segue God right now. Drop it on him, man. You no, know we got this <laughs> thing on. now called cancel culture, right? And so the question is, what is your cancel culture threshold? And so when I say that, I mean, you know, we've had so much going on in the world, like from R. Kelly. Chris Brown, the mm-hmm. NFL with Colin Kaepernick. There's so many different things that people are so quick to cancel culture on or cancel a person. And, you know, we all make mistakes. We all have flaws. But what do you think, y'all think about it, I'll answer for myself. What, would you, what do you think your cancel culture threshold is? So for me, for example, like, I love Chris Brown. Like, talented guy. He could do no wrong in my eyes. However, you mm-hmm. know, the Rihanna incident happened. None of us know what really went down that car. Yeah, we saw the pictures of her, how she right. looked, but at the end of the day, we still don't know. So a lot of people did cancel him after that happened. Me, I did not. I was just like, that's something that happened. That was a personal situation. I still enjoy his music, you know, and, and some, of his, some, his, some of his little acting gigs he's done too. So I didn't write him off, you know, because of that situation. That was me. So AJ, what is your thoughts on cancel culture? How do you feel about that? Like, what is your threshold? Um, I don't, um, I don't, uh, I, I, I hate the whole phrase, mm-hmm. first of all, yeah. and, um, I think that we've been doing that way before we called it something cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think we did that with Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. uh, and, I, and I think, and I think we did that. I mean, of course we did it with OJ. Um, but it was interesting how we did it with OJ, but at the same time, we, we celebrated when he got off. Right, right. You that's a, it did happen. That's a double so, one on that one. That's so that, that one. but that's, but that's who, that's what we've become. Mm-hmm. We've become, we've become a contradiction of ourselves. We are in direct conflict with ourselves. Yes. And I think, I think the problem that we have, that we suffer from is that we have forgotten who we are and what we are. And uh, I'm not saying don't hold people accountable because I think we should. Um, but I think that we should also gather all the information before we start m- passing judgment. Exactly. And I think, so I think that, um, I think that uh, Black folk don't have the luxury to mm. cancel anybody. Um, right. We don't have the luxury of doing that because we're all that we've got. Now, R. Kelly, he has issues. He has real life uh, traumatic issues yep. that he has been playing out. And then the problem with that is a lot of people knew that he had psychological and emotional traumas and they still allow the, the, the behavior mm, because they were right. benefiting from it. So we don't get to just cancel him out just because he's been exposed. We also, if you're going to expose him, you got to expose the people around him who allowed him in that position, who allowed that to happen. Absolutely. And so um, I stand by Michael Jackson. I stand by Chris Brown until I have all of the information. And if, especially if I wasn't there, I don't mm-hmm. have a right to, I don't have the right to pass judgment. Um, I still do believe that R. Kelly is probably one of the most so I do a I do a television show right, and uh, I, and David Banner was one of my guests. And yes, he an did. episode, great episode. Thank you. So you heard mm-hmm. the part where he said, "You don't have to be perfect to be great." You heard it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, that's right. And that's how I feel. You don't have to be perfect to be great. You know what I mean? Every, you know, we ex, we have such high expectations of each other, but we don't yeah. have those high expectations of ourselves that's as a exactly. culture. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. You know what so, I mean? like, so that's that's how I feel about that. I don't want to take up everybody's time. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. I like that your feedback, Carmen. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's it kind of similar. I, I think it's a case to case, um, case for case, um, for me. Situational situation for me, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm a person of forgiveness, like you said. And I don't like I said. I think I said in an earlier um, episode that I don't know a, a perfect person, and if if it is, please show me. So I mean, you know, so every most people, I would say, not everybody, but most people deserve some type of forgiveness. And um, so I, I would say I'm pretty forgiving depending on the situation. I have a couple of situations where I kind of 
whether it's subconsciously or not, I may not listen to certain things or watch certain, you know, certain shows because of, because of it. But, it. but it's very limited. Like I said, like you know, so yeah. I mean, I think I think right now it's it's too easy just to cancel somebody, you know, or not like somebody, and people goes off and runs off with limited information, and then make the um make decisions based off of limited information, and now this right. is what I'm supposed to like. And you don't have you don't even have like half the facts what's going you don't on. Know none of the facts, I kind of yeah. tread slowly with you know how I feel and trying to watch a little bit longer, and then I just go with my gut. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more. You know, I take my time with it. Cool. Okay. Just like, Jermaine, just like should... with, the, with the whole. Go ahead, AJ. Thing. Yeah, I was just thinking. Like oh, whole, yeah. With, with the whole thing with Ice Cube, it's like, you know, he right. stood up and he said, you know, first of all, we have to understand what voting is. Number one, we and voting is not. Um, based on how you feel about somebody, it's based on doing business with somebody. That's it's it. The same thing. When you hire somebody for your company, you want to see what their qualifications are before you let them work for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's how we should treat voting, and so that's what Ice Cube was trying to say. And then he, you know, he got together with a a, a select few of intellectual people, uh, Claude Anderson and. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Cornell West and a few others, you know, mm-hmm. and they put this agenda together and black folk didn't even take a look at it before they passed judgment. No, they was ready that, to pass judgment. You know what I mean? That pissed me off so much because I'm like, yo, first of all, he's speaking full on your behalf. And then somebody was like, well, I don't want some rapper, you know, talking for me. Well, Harry Belafonte spoke on behalf of the people. He was That's a singer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they marched Ruby D and Austin Davis they were actors they still mm-hmm. had value yeah. even though they do some things for a living they still had value and I think Ice Cube because he had such a you know he's you know he's very politically literate so yeah. why not but they gave why? they gave Kanye a pass AJ well no they gave him they dismissed Kanye because they, they dismissed him as crazy well, that's, that's right. You know what I'm saying? So that's sixty thousand votes in one county. I mean, in one state. No, I'm 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 just speaking about the general public in yeah. terms of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 of yeah like the judgment, like in terms of the cancel culture. I mean, right. I don't I don't think there's anything wrong. Listen, we could, we should we we should understand that we can vote anybody in. Yeah. That's our mm-hmm. that's our freedom of choice, right? That's correct. So the fact that Kanye got those many votes, I think he should have got more. Ronald Reagan, he was just an actor. Talk about it. I'm watching them. I'm watching those uh, episodes now on Showtime. He was you just an actor. He was. He they was figured it out. And, and and he wasn't very good. <laughs> no, he was terrible. <laughs> he was a terrible <laughs> actor. I'm watching those episodes now with my lady. It's like, yo, Ronald Reagan was just a a, a, a front man for the Republican Party. Say, hey, read Boom. these lines. That's mm. it. Yeah. That's, That's crazy. Good. So but, so why is why is that so far fetched for somebody? that look like us yeah. to represent us. Like, why is that so far? Again, that's our mentality that we have got to break away from. You mm-hmm. know, we don't think enough of ourselves to put somebody, you know, on the front lines and, and to support them. You know, we're so, we want them, we want them to like us so much. Why? Yeah. I don't and know. And perfect. And yeah. the, the biggest point is, even well, you know, with Ice Cube was the fact that I don't feel like people was not looking at his track record before that. He has a track record for supporting the black community. So like he doesn't get a like even a pass for that. I don't I don't understand. It's that. not a pass that he needs. We need to talk to the president. We need to, whoever he is, we need his ear and someone needs to talk on our behalf. Period. That's a strong period. On the lane. And he spoke on our behalf because nobody was talking. And well, but, but the black media, like the alternative black media, were talking about it um, uh, quite a bit, and and you know he brought it to the forefront in terms of the tangibles, you know. Uh-huh. And a lot of people were talking about reparations. I listen, I don't think that we'll ever get reparations, and I think if they finally do agree to give reparations, and they'll they'll claim bankruptcy the day after. <laughs> so uh, facts on that. You can't That's trust a good that. Point. I, you know, it's it's about it's about unifying. And then mobilizing that unification, yeah. and and being able to move a little bit differently than we used to, you know right. what I mean. Um, mm-hmm. So I like that mobilizing and unifying. Yeah, I like that. That mm-hmm. too. I mean, that's the only. I mean, it's not. It's not about waiting for them to do anything for you. I've yeah. never. I don't. You don't wait around for somebody to do something for for what? 
Okay. Number eight. Especially get out when there. we are the. Here's the thing: we are the original man. Mm -hmm. We are the creators of all things cool, all things architecture. We we, we mm -hmm. invented science, mathematics, design, mm -hmm. architecture. Right, right. We know it all. All yeah. we have to do is unify and 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 combine those different skill sets. All of us have different gifts in different ways, and mm -hmm. you know, miss. If Ms. Mabel needs her grass cut, who's the best grass cutter? Who's got the best lawnmower? You know what I'm saying? Let's start there. You know what I'm saying? That's who's true. The best? Who, who can, who can, who can uh, mow her lawn once a week? Let's pay him to do that at the whole neighbor or whatever. It's yeah. all about whatever. That's how that's how Black Wall Street got started. Yeah. Like that. So everybody came yeah. together and whoever was the big banker, they knew how to bank. They built a bank. Whoever knew who, who the teachers were, they had a school, you know, contractors and construction people, they all built, um, you know, their houses and paint. So they didn't rely on anybody, any outside help. And that's where I think we're going to be forced back into that. But we, you know, we're going to be kind of asked out if ain't nobody got no skill set. That's something that Killer Mike talks about. Um, going back to cropping and being able to plant your own food and hunt and all that stuff like that. It, I, I, to some folks in 2020, it doesn't make sense, but that's going to be a vital skill set, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 go ahead. I'm, no, go ahead. My bad, bro. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you go ahead. Okay. So, so, look, I'm about to be all over the place. It's a lot of moving parts of my answer, but I'm going to pull everything together. Just bear with me. Okay. Um, so, AJ and Kwame touched on some important things here. Um, first and foremost, um, just using that, um, I keep as an example, not going on. Um, part of the reason, well, one of the issues with us, the black community, is that we're monolithic. We only speak one language, we only move on one gear. And we don't, it doesn't matter who the messenger is, it's about the message. And I think a lot of times, and you don't have to be politically inclined to understand it, that, you know, Q, for the most part, he meant well, right? He meant well, right. he probably, we don't, we don't, we need to stop waiting for white folks to validate our credibility and our Thank and you. our skill set. You, you understand Thank what I'm saying? You. Yeah. But we've been yes. so conditioned to wait for a white person to tell us, hey, you qualify for this or you need yeah. standards for this and we buy into that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm saying? Right. Right. That's right. part of the right. problem. And it and, and it's not only is it radioactive, but that mindset is generational. It's a curse. I like to yes. I like to say that it's a curse, right? So we mm -hmm. so bring it back to cancel culture. Um with Michael Jackson and, and, and RK, all these Bill Cosby. My point is this. I think that holding someone accountable isn't the same thing as cancel culture, right? You right, people, right, uh, absolutely. Right? And it's absolutely. actually, and, and AJ, you, you, you may know the names. I just know the incidents. I can't think of the names right there, right now, but there were a few comedians who were actually canceled because of things they said. Oh, um, oh Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. um, what about the other guy? Was Bill Burr? Um, um, no, not um, Bill. God, the guy they tried to Seinfeld. cancel Bill. The guy who was on Seinfeld. Oh, um, yeah, Michael Richardson. Oh, oh Michael Richardson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, and, oh, 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 are you You're making a good point before. <laughs> making a great point. <laughs> Bro, bad, dog. Listen, I'm at my mom's house in the middle of nowhere, man. All right, what about now? Can y'all hear okay. me? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, stop moving. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm be still. Because I'm getting emotional about this, right? Hold on, wait. Okay. okay, so look. So holding someone accountable is not the same thing as cancel culture. Now, let me let me just That's hit right. a couple. I'm going to hit a couple points and I'm going to move on. So when I think about cancel culture, I think about the goal. What is the goal of it? The goal is the... Is to, is to reduce perceived harm to an individual or some ge some geographical location, okay? Now, with that being said, is cancel culture really effective? I'll give you two examples, because when I think cancel culture, I think about the definition and I think about the word power. For example, um, Chick-fil-A was supposedly canceled by the LGBTQ community, right? Supposedly, right. Mm -hmm. okay, it didn't work. Chick-fil-A is, is, is pumping. Chick-fil-A is like the new trap house now. I know we're, DC, where, yep. where we live, North Carolina, it's, it's, it's pumping. All right, watch this. Amy Cooper, 
was canceled for the anti-black behavior of the bird watcher dude, right? Um, yeah. Christian Cooper, right? No, no can. All right. Mm-hmm. She lost mm-hmm. a job. She lost a dog uh, and some other stuff. But here's, 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 how, here's how it's inverted. Because she's white and she's privileged, she really got those things back. She just went on to a different direction. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think we need to think about pick and choose the battles. It, it, you know, it, uh, do we want to hold them accountable or do we want to cancel them? And come back to our culture, I think as black folks, we just have so much going on in our community from mental illness. And I'm not getting off track from mental illness to, and we talked about this too. We talked about um, all the other elements and, and impediments in our culture that we're, we're just looking for targets. Anything, anybody can be a target, right? At all and, times. Um, at all times. So anyway, cancel culture, I'm not for it at all. I just think we need to hold folks accountable and understand that there's power in cancel culture, right? There is power in it but it can be inverted if it's not effectively carried out. Because at the end of the day, it's about money. So. <laughs> That's true. All right, Jamie, bring us along. What you think? All right. Uh, my council cultural threshold is, is more like, you know, what did he do or what did she do, right? Because the R. Kelly thing, I got to give y'all a story. So we knew, the, we knew I done seen the tapes. Yeah, I did too, bro. I'd I think we saw it together. It was too. years. That was like two thousand and I don't know four, two. three, three, so three, two thousand two, like three or four, something like two. That. Okay. Yeah. So this is now. I went on a date with a young lady. She took me to the R. Kelly show, and I did not want to go. <laughs> I was shamed. I didn't take no pictures or nothing. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. When I tell you that nigga was jamming, he was jamming. <laughs> <laughs> I was so ashamed. AJ, I was like this. <laughs> I shouldn't be here, but step in the name of love. Yeah. <laughs> this was a Greensboro Coliseum. I'm like, man, I should. You not saw a be lot here. wrong with it, but you still win, huh? I had to go. She said, man, I'm, and I was looking at her like, we're going to the Art Kelly concert. And you paying for it? Oh, so I didn't want to go, but I went. So I'm not with the council culture because there's no power behind it. You cancel this person, but you can't cancel the art. Oh, right. Because the exactly. person isn't going to be perfect. We agree upon that. So they're not going to come out as perfect. We all have our flaws. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the Michael Jackson thing, I don't know. I wasn't there. Oh, no. There's and proof Thriller is the jam. So what there's am I supposed proof. to do? No, there's, there's proof that he was innocent. I'm standing on that. That's okay. fair, right? But, so my AJ. You know, to us here in, in North Carolina, we don't have that proof of it all. Yes, you we've do. Been, yes, you do, baby. Shove shoveled all this mess. Like, you're murking up the no, waters no, no, that no, we no. know as Michael. Let me introduce you. Let me let me interrupt you on that one. You, there's a mm-hmm. lot of information on YouTube mm-hmm. that will, that will, that can, that you just got to sit through it. But there's a lot of evidence, uh, mainly with, uh, you know, Mark Mesro, his, 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 uh, his attorney, attorney. you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of information that proved, first of all, let me just say this real quick, just for one example, mm-hmm. one of the liars in leaving Neverland, right? One of the accusers. Um, yeah. and I remember, I remember Wade Robson. Yeah, me too, from the show. From way yeah. back in the day, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, wow, he can dance like Mike and all that stuff. We were so fascinated by him. And, um, and, and 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 there's there's so much there's so much visual proof that he's lying. The uh-huh. other dude, I never heard of the other dude before, and I'm like the ultimate Michael Jackson fan. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. Um, he said that Michael abused him in 1992 or three uh-huh. in the train station. Wow. You know, it's the, on Neverland on the property. Do you know yeah. how? That property is as large as um, it's acres and acres and acres and acres of land. I mean, imagine like the the, the size of like a football field or mm-hmm. something like. I mean, it's really really huge. So there, you know, the train station that takes you on a tour of the whole property, right? Mm-hmm. So he said that Michael abused him, and so like his uh, his the train station was two stories high. And uh, so I guess there were lots of rooms, and there was like a little little general store on the bot on the on the first level and stuff. Anyway, so he said he abused him upstairs in the train station. Well, here's the problem with that: 
the train station wasn't built until 1994. Oh, actually. Michael was married to Lisa Marie around that time. Mm -hmm. So none of the stuff lines up. On top of that, all 14 counts have been, he was proven innocent, not just not guilty, he was proven innocent because a lot of the folks came back and they retracted their statements. A lot of the kids, mm -hmm. you know, said that their parents had pressured them. And, and, and then there's lots of written document, documented proof that they were extort, extorting right. Mike, you know, and right. there was a lot of stuff yeah. that Mike was just too nice to come, come forth and say what somebody did because there was a gag order on the settlement. And sometimes he was just like, look, I got to go out of the country, just settle this while I, you know, until I get back and I got to go mm -hmm. and I don't want to have to go to court. You know, like rich people have different types of problems than we do. That's right. Right. Well, never Will, Smith, Will, Smith, Will Smith came to his defense too, because he was like, I have my attorneys on retainer all the time, just in case some shit go down and I ain't got time to deal with it. And I can settle it. But when we hear, oh, he settled we automatically are like the brother just like Jermaine just said, we're conditioned to think, oh, that means you're guilty, guilty. and you want it to go away. That's not necessarily what it means. That's right. So anyway, there's a lot of proof that he's innocent. And so I stand on that. And then, you know, the whole thing with Bill Cosby. And it's not because he was my boss, it's because the women are not did they did not tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And there's proof that they didn't tell the truth. How are you gonna rape somebody that you dating for 14 years talk about it how yeah how you gonna call somebody your rapist that is, but he pays for your college your whole college career yeah and you and you getting tickets to his shows and you bringing your family and friends to the show but he your rapist stuff but he raped you though mm -hmm. come on stop it yeah. Yeah. stop it you know yeah. what i mean so that's why i say yeah. we gotta get all we have to yeah. shut off the media and really go do our own research and really find out right. what the information is before we before and, and even if you do do extensive research and you still want to have your own conclusion at least you did the research i respect that but um but don't just go along with what they say on cnn right. and assume that that's, that's the right. truth because most of the time there's an agenda uh you know mm. underneath all of the propaganda so yeah, right. I'm, not, I'm not for the cancel culture at all either. Oh, okay. the folks right. should be canceling. We praising. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Say about that. <laughs> so, speaking of <clears throat> um, the term cancel, this is somewhat. Well, we can we can actually throw the term cancel in this this next question. I want to ask you all, um, but it pertains to dating. Right, it pertains to dating. Um, it's, I'm, it's, I'm almost. It's safe to say everyone up here is dated at some point in their lives. I believe. A little bit. Um, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> me too. AJ. Me, AJ, me too. Just a little bit. Not much. <laughs> Fall back, but no. So, <clears throat> in terms of dating, there are a couple of questions that I think um, are important. Um, but here's a question I want to ask you ask you all and um i think it'll make for some great discussion but but it, it's important too because we can we can learn from one another but in terms of dating can you all think of the worst date that you've had right as an adult mm -hmm. you know in your, in your teens and early i guess early 20s <laughs> doesn't count but like the worst date no seriously aj like the worst date and and what made it like the worst date why do um, you want to know that why do you want to know that <laughs> you know, I, I, you sharing these stories, like what, and that's what, a what, wonderful what question. What motivated you to ask that question, though? Um, that's on our. T we have topic list, and that's the one we picked. Okay, and, 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 all right. But, so, so these, yeah, these are topics. These yeah, are we're all going to answer. People, yeah, 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 yeah. These are topics that people sent to us, and we just uh -huh. chose oh, these particular okay. topics. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but but we're right. all going to answer it, and I'm I'm going to be forthcoming with my. Um, Me too. Yeah, I'm gonna be <laughs> So, AJ, you the lady of Eve ah, of the of the hour. Of I'm Eve? sorry. The hour. Oh, no, 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 no. She's the lady of the podcast. She's yeah, the lady of the go. podcast. Oh, that's yeah. better. Beautiful yes. lady of the Clean podcast. Clean that up. We go. Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. definitely. Yes, right. So, um, <clears throat> so once upon a time, not long ago. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> 
So it was, it was early early 2000s, and I, I live um, an hour south of LA. So a lot of uh, us don't live out here, right? So I went out with this one guy, and he was a white dude, and um, he was... Uh, he seemed like he was, he was like, you know, he, he was one of those white dudes that uh, always, that, 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 that proclaims that he hates other white people. Like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he was like, yeah. oh, I, you know those kind? Yes, I, I detest I those people. Like, like what? <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm like, you don't even have to say that, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> if that's your get down, whatever. Like, I don't hate all white people, why, you know, so... Right. He was like, yeah, our, you know, he was just all about like, you know, our culture is really fucked up. This is like, after, you know, he asked me out. I met him in Laguna and, you know, he was like, I'd love to take you out. You're so beautiful. And I was like, all right, you know, so we went to dinner. And so we're sitting there and he's just going off about how he just, you know, can't stand his people and, mm. and how we, how they've just robbed and raped and pillaged. You know, I couldn't disagree, you know, historically. <laughs> Well, it's like a duh. Like, where are we going with this, right? Yeah, what's your angle? Right. So anyway, so we talking, blah, blah, blah. So I already know that this is going to be like a one date type of situation. So I eat my free food. I saw, I, 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 you know, I, <laughs> sorry, I said that out loud, but I did. It's real and, life. It's real. And, uh, and so, but at the dinner table, he said, uh, like, what? Right at towards the end, he goes, so what's your favorite? He goes, what is your, do you, he says, what is your fetish? What is your sexual fetish? Off the rip? Damn, they oh. weren't. And I, I guess said, what it was about. I knew it. You knew it. So I was like, well, uh, I, I, I mean, you know, just your average little, you know, pickle <laughs> and slap tickle you know what i mean i was like i don't know I was like, slap and tickle I don't know you like that for me to even like have right like, to open up so right. so i was just like you know your usual little whatever you know cute little smack and blah, 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 whatever you know a little kink here and there you know but i'm not you know out of the ordinary i just kind of you know glazed over because i was like ooh, that's really not appropriate okay so hmm. he said and this is what makes it the worst date ever <laughs> he said what we're at dinner, mind you. Uh huh. He said, "Uh, well, I like to be plated." The hell is that? What? I don't know what it is. That's some new shit. Plated. I'm glad you asked. He said, "What I like for you to do mm. is to eat a full meal." No. And. When you have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, on top of me. What? That's called plating. Oh! Two girls, one cup, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I want you to do it in my mouth. Oh my God. And I was like, never. Like, check, please. (laughs) And then, oh, and what was really a trip? This is like sitcom moment. What was really a trip? The waiter comes over and goes, hey, did y'all save any room for dessert? I was like, nope. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> oh, God. That's disgusting. Actually, no, no, we no out. room. Yeah, yeah she, that, was, that was the worst. And so, related. After, yeah, after that, I was like, all right, then, well, you, so, you know, he, he kept calling me. What's wrong with you? You don't want to call back? I was like, oh, I'm busy. Uh, I'm going to be busy for the rest of my life. The rest hey, AJ, I'm life. sorry you had to experience that. I'm so sorry you had to experience that, man. <laughs> well, oh, here's man. the thing. What it did was it brought me back to the brothers, though. Because, you know, for a minute there, I was kind of like, you know, I need to explore my yeah, horizon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go visit some things. <laughs> a little bit. I was yeah. like, I ran back to the brothers. Like, <laughs> 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 smoking. <laughs> that brother like, no <laughs> doubt. Get it on. No yeah, doubt. Learn something new, man. Damn. I was like, I'm coming all the way back home. I ran back home so quick. I was like, but I do that. But I do that. Stay on this yeah. side, AJ. Stay on this side. Jamie, what you got? Stay. I'm here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, okay, y'all know I ain't had but one real job in my life. So <laughs> I was working with the Durham Bulls that season. It was 2005. And I felt like I was an adult by that time. I had a Mustang. I was living it up. And I was uh, told to go on this um, uh, blind lunch date with uh, this Delta. And I would give you her name. 
Erica Jesse is Alpha <laughs> Lambda. Oh, you gonna say her name ass. for real, dude? Yeah, dog. I'm dropping names. I don't give a shit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we go to um, what's, what's, what's the restaurant over in the ballpark with his clothes now? Back anyway, Roadhouse. we went to mm. huh? Tobacco Roadhouse somewhere? No, in the ballpark. I mean, oh, across the tobacco campus. It was. Anyway, it was. It was, it was, it was uh, yeah. It was like a bar, like a uh, yeah, the bar spot. Bar type. Yeah, 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 like an Irish joint had a little. Uh, yeah. Speakeasy in the back. So we're having lunch and we're just talking and I get my food and it's a chicken sandwich. But when I tell y'all the patty was really small, it didn't even cover the bun. It was like, okay, this is really small. And I was nice about it. I said, would you mind sending this back? This is not large enough, you know? And the, and the, and the waiter was like, yeah, that is really small. So they took it back. When I tell you that her day was shot because I sent my food back, I was like, what? Oh, this is why you're single because this shouldn't my my decision shouldn't affect your day. She was done for. I mean, like she wanted to just leave at the moment. She was just embarrassed that I decided to send my food back. What did she do? What did she do to make you for you to know that she was embarrassed? What she say? She had the hand down, like I can't believe you did that. I'm like, what do you mean you can't believe I sent my food back? That you're paying for. (laughs) That I'm paying for (laughs) for both of us. This doesn't. This thing. You you see that it's not enough chicken on this chicken sandwich, and see, we need what, to send this back. And I, that's and I what makes to, us want to run to the other side, AJ. When we man. gotta deal with stuff like that. you gotta get your man some chicken. So, <laughs> <laughs> listen, I don't I don't really blame you. And I'm gonna tell you something. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm gonna get off the topic just a, t- a little bit. Now that you said what you just said, mm-hmm. like I I have one best friend, right, and um. She is the best friend that I've ever had. And I've had a lot of, you know, female friends over the years and stuff. But being friends with, trying to be friends with Black women mm-hmm. is a chore. It can be, it can be, it can be, it can be a little bit, even, you know, even friends from church when you can, like, you feel very, like, we, I don't know where, what happened, but we became very combative yeah. and very defensive. And there were times where I even told my mom, I was like, you know what? I understand why brothers cross the fence a little bit. I understand why they jump ship. I get it because, because it's like, what, 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 why, why, why does everything have to be like, oh, uh, uh, and why, and you know, yeah, that even if I would I compliment you, and I was like, oh, you know, your hair looks really pretty today, girl. This hair is just what you know. It's always it's it's, you can't just relax, humble yourself, and just talk to each other. And I know. And yeah, it's all extra all the time. So I mean, I get it. So yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah. Quan, what you got, dude? Uh, well, Max. Well, first of all, like I said, I, I hate dating in general. I mean, you know, it's, I just don't like meeting new people too often. But you got to do it in order to meet someone. Um, so I, I was in a long, t- uh, well, got in a long term relationship. So that five years after those five years whatever the whole dating scene changed so i, I mean it's yeah. like a whole new world to me i'm like what's going yeah. on <laughs> and during this time i guess even now the whole online dating and and, and the dating apps and stuff was there so it felt so foreign to me and actually jamie i don't know if you remember but you encouraged me to try it and then yeah. also courtney from you know from school she she also encouraged me to try it too so i tried the online date and stuff That's what he had. And it, it was cool. I mean, I didn't really have like too too bad of a situation. I ain't meeting like no serious catfish type thing or whatever like that. Um, but like, of course, every date wasn't wasn't great. And so one time I met this uh, this this uh, this lady. She, I think she's like a tax attorney or uh, um, yeah, she was a tax attorney. So we supposed to meet for ice cream. She so and so on her way, I guess meeting. She was like, well. I'm bringing my dog with me too. Is that okay? I'm thinking like, do I got a choice? Oh, <laughs> hell no. Yeah, yeah so, so that was the first little like little strike I wasn't really feeling. I'm like, I, I never met you. You bring the dog to to a, a meetup date like that. You could be allergic. I could be exactly. anything. You know what I'm so, saying? So like, I could be scared of dogs, anything. She didn't care. So she shows up with her little her dog and in the, in the little basket things, whatever. She wasn't bad looking though, but we got some ice cream and as we were sitting down trying to like uh, make some small talk tell me she didn't do it no what she was doing was 
Well, she could have. Well, she got the dog her own ice on ice. I was cream about to say she didn't lick the ice cream, give it to dog. Nah, she didn't do okay. that, but she did get okay. the dog her own little cup of ice cream. So okay. I'm still looking at her like she's a weirdo, but I'm still trying to keep it cool. So as, as she's eating her uh, her ice cream, I'm seeing her hands. Yo, am I? Yo, I never <laughs> seen a female hands. So she was so ashy. It was really oh, like, yo, know, it, it looked like she just got done changing a tire or something. I'm like, yo, and every time she was licking the ice cream, I kept looking at her hands. You said she ain't had gloves on, man. It, it, it looked like she was doing something. Man, I don't know if she was baking baking biscuits that morning or something. They were like thoroughly, like I, I never Dang. seen a female that, that ashy before. And now all I kept doing is like, so at a point in my mind, I'm like, yo, I got to get up out of here. But I'm trying to be polite and whatever, and trying to grunt through whatever and stuff but i just couldn't get past she was a little quirky and everything but i just right. couldn't pass the hands and the ass and i'm like yo she must make no effort to put no lotion on she didn't she, she must didn't check herself she just came up and showed up to say i'm here too worried about that hey. Lotion. About that? <laughs> hey listen hey listen you know them hands are ashy you know that you know them the the, the heels are ashy you know mm. that the That's ankles right. are ashy the, the knees, knees the elbow you know what i'm saying so you you would, you was going if y'all was trying to get in intimate, you, nah. you would have been like in bed with sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and probably like, buns too. Them buns probably were ashy too, fam. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> terrible. Was ashy, I was out. No need to slide. I never called her back, but you know. No doubt. You guys, hey, that Kishara, Kishara, what you, what you got? What you got? What you, what, what's worse? Mine is hard because, like I said, you said your adulthood, and you know, I got married young, so I didn't really get to date like that. But, well, let's go back. What did, your shirt, what did your shirt say? Oh, it's homage to a different word. Gina, Lena, Dorian, oh, Terrell, Charmaine. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm at the That's dope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So um, it's actually about my wife. So you know, we was trying to, yeah, we was actually trying to figure out what we was trying to do, you know, because y'all know I stalked her for a long time. Yeah, you stalked me, real talk. Stalk <laughs> her. So, <laughs> so she ended up getting another boyfriend. Well, she got a boyfriend. I wasn't her first boyfriend. I should have been, but she got a boyfriend, and I still was trying my shot. So I knew she liked Mary J. Blige. So I bought concert tickets to a Mary J. Blige concert in Greensboro. So oh. she, she agreed to go. God damn, dog, you went for it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> she she agreed to go. So I'm thinking, like, yeah, this is gonna be my shot. Like she said yes, and she got a man, it's gonna be on. Picked her up from the dorm. We drove to Greensboro. I'm just saying all kind of stuff to you know shoot my shot. She just shooting everything down, like, no, like. I told I'm you we were friends. I hate, I hate that shit. Yeah. We get to the concert, you know, I'm buying all this stuff, the shirts, the food. I'm doing all this stuff, thinking like that. Eventually, I'm gonna wear her down. Yeah. Had a good time at the concert. Drive back to Durham, you know, and I tried to shoot my shot. Like I tried to get leaning for the kiss, and she, she was like, "No, nah, like I told you, it ain't going down." And I'm like, "I told you, we all this time together." We had a good time. I can't even get a kiss. I, I didn't spend like, this money. Right. She was like, no, nah, that ain't. I told you it's not happening. I got somebody. So I was pissed. I shouldn't have been, but I was. I was like really pissed off. And so after that, that Kwame you might remember, all y'all might remember, that's when I knew then. I was like, you know what? I don't need this crap. Like she can do her and I'm going to do me. But I was pissed. Like I can't believe I spent all this money and she still did not. Give me nothing but just time. <laughs> you know I me. Mean? I spent. I was a college student. And I yes. Spent <laughs> to, 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 you know, to this. Yeah, that shit. So, so, so to me, that was my worst day because I was like, I can't believe I spent this. I've never so been in a situation where I spent yeah. money on somebody and I didn't. You know, feel like I got some type of benefit out of the. But your situation. worst date was with your wife. With your wife. My wife. Yeah. Well, so you, you know what? You, you so lost you. the battle, Kishara, but you won the war. Won the war. That's right, dude. No, exactly. Now, real <laughs> quick, let me let me follow up with that. Mine is real quick. Um, um, Kisharo, Jamie, you never met the young, this last young lady I dated, uh, which scarred me from dating for a while. Um, but anyway, she What's was a narcissist. I, I, let me, let me say her name. Don't say, say her name. Say her name. <laughs> Do not. Tahira. Drop her the bomb. Tahira. I dropped the bomb. Erica uh, Jess ass. Anyway, listen. Uh, I had never. 
like, yo, I had never dealt with like anything like this. Like I, I want to be careful when I pick and choose my words here. Not all Please. black women, not all black women have um, an attitude, right? You know, <laughs> some need to be fine tuned a little bit, just a little bit. But I just started picking up on things maybe like, maybe like three or four dates in. I had never dealt with this before in my life. I never dealt with narcissism. So I remember we went to Ocean Prime, DC, right? Right, right on. Right nice steakhouse. Yeah, went to Ocean Prime. And um, so sometimes as a man, all I'm thinking about is making sure the environment's cool, she's good, paying for, you know, just, just making sure everything's good, um, you know, getting drinks, whatever. And I'm doing all these things, there's a lot going on. And um, long story short, the food comes. I'm very cordial with my food. I, yo, you want anything? My, my, my rhetoric is, hey, you want to taste anything before I eat, before I start eating? Because once I start uh, eating, it's all me. bets off, right? <laughs> yeah. Yo, I somehow forgot to ask this chick. Oh, my God. She wants some of my food. Let me tell you something. Jamie, you know how you said old girl just, like, shut down on you? Yeah. Her whole, I think that narcissism shit started kicking in and the rejection side of whatever, whatever functions. Yo, when I tell you she shut down, and it was like this black cloud just came over the right. room sitting in. Yeah. And it was like, it was like, it was just, it was somewhat, I'm not bullshit, man. It was like somewhat demonic-ish, if that's even, we're making this word up tonight. It was like, it was just like her whole, it was almost like she didn't want to be there anymore. All because Yeah, that's say, what it's, hey, yeah. Because you, you didn't say, do you want some? Yeah. Would you um, have some? Yeah, yeah, do you want some? I just totally forgot because the thing is, you know, when the food comes, we've been waiting, whatever, whatever, you, you know, you're munching on the appetizer. Food comes, the drinks come, and, and it just slipped my mind. And the other time, I might have been like, yo, you, you know, you want something before, before I start or whatever? Or you want to swap, you know? This young lady, I'm not lying. It, 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 was, it wasn't even like, damn, you know? It wasn't like, yo, uh, you ain't, you ain't going to offer me nothing, but sticking her hand in my plate at the same time. I'm cool with right. that. It's like she shut down, like, and it ruined the whole entire evening. And it made me feel, it just made me feel so, not just unappreciated, but it just made me feel like, man, you got to do better than what you're doing, bro. Like, <laughs> come on, man. You got to get out of this thing, man. Yeah. So when there's no, there was no conversation after that? Like, she didn't talk or did she give you Listen, No, no. Time? I'm talking about the conversation was like, pew, just like, From, and I didn't want to talk to her. I, 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 yeah, I didn't want to get out of there. Yeah. I didn't want to engage engage in uh in any conversation. So at that night in Ocean Prime, I started planning my exit out of the relationship. Like yeah. I'm about to just get out. Like cause cause I saw the signs and and, and, it, and I'm not gonna go into detail with some other things, but she definitely was going, she was she was seeing, which I thought was dope because a lot of times in the black community, we don't want to go get therapy. We think it's forbidden or some something like that. She was yeah. she was she was going to a therapist, she she had just moved her from a different country going to a therapist and I kind of knew some of the, some of the issues, but I didn't know that it, something could trigger something you know, could be triggered like that. Right. Uh -huh. But yo, the, the, the mood that it brought to that booth we were sitting in, it was, I can't even explain. It was just like some type of spirit. Yeah, man. Like I'm not lying. <laughs> yo. So I just like, you know what, let me get away from it. And I'm so glad that's one of the best decisions I made, man. Like for real, you know, so I'm not uh, so now. Can I ask you, what did you have on your plate that was so good <laughs> that she had to have a piece of it that you didn't know? But you know, well, you know, I, I, know, I all the ladies fish, right? Fish. I had, mm -hmm. I had salmon. They have mm -hmm. great salmon. I had salmon and probably like some asparagus or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't even think it was the food. I think it was the fact that it, it's. It, I think it was the fact it was the reject. It was it was the catering part, right? And 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 the appeasement of it. You know what I mean? Right. Like cater to me you understand what i'm saying and if you don't i feel rejected and this rejection reminds me of my relationship with my mom right Dang. yada 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 is going back and mm -hmm. it just it just yo it just it, it disgusted me like i really you yo y'all know i take if i'm gonna eat my food i'm taking it home Bottom line, <laughs> I'm eating shit. like i didn't want to take the food home i just wanted to leave i just you know want out saying? yeah it sounds like so, she really anyway, yeah yeah, yeah, man. Like for she really messed it up. Up. So cool. messed it up. Cool. I got you. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, fellas. So, do y'all know what time it is right now? What time is it? What time is it? Dose of dopeness. Let's do this. Ready? Yeah. All right. So, 
So our dose of dopeness honoree is in the house tonight. So Ooh, we're gonna right. let her let the world, let the people know what she got going on, any new projects she has going on. So AJ, you are our dose of dopeness highlight of the evening. So yes. this is your time to shine and just let the world know what you got going on. So the floor is yours. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, I've had a great time here. Thank y'all for being for allowing me to be. Uh, I feel like I was eavesdropping on uh on, on in, in a man on, cave. On a this, was really, this was dope. <laughs> it really thank was. You for, uh, it was. Thank you for hanging out. With um, us. So, well, right now I am. Uh, I'm working on my autobiography, mm-hmm. and the title of the autobiography is called "I Could Have Been a Porn Star." Uh, uh, buy that yes uh lots lots of ways that i could have been a porn star but um so but that is part of the title that um i'm working on right now and um and i also host my own on my talk show my online streaming talk show on um business bully tv now here's the story behind that It started out as uh, me and a few comedians just kicking it on Zoom, just like this. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, one of my friends who I didn't know at the time, but she worked at Netflix and she, they, they offered me the deal first. Mm -hmm. But when I, but, but when I learned and met this, uh, this brother who owned his own network, black owned, black operated, I went, Mm -hmm. I went that route. Gotcha. And um, and so Business Bully TV is black owned, black operated, and um, uh, I have full autonomy uh, with this project. And it's it is literally like um, it's I don't even know what to call it. It's just it's a gift. It was a it, it was an mm-hmm. idea that was turned into an actual TV project, and I'm really grateful for. It. But um, more than that, it's uh, it's it's a conversation that you would have at a cookout. Uh-huh. Barbershop, beauty salon. It's not your. It's not your granddaddy's talk show. Uh, right. You got to have really thick skin to sit through it. You know because mm. we are very opinionated, but we show that you can disagree and still, and you can disagree in love. You know what mm. I mean? Because mm. um, there's a lot of times I get checked. <laughs> by <laughs> panel. You know what I mean? And I'm the host and creator of the damn thing. Um, <laughs> But I'm okay with it because I'm a big girl and I'm a grown up. So um, I'm willing to learn and listen. So it's all about being open minded and being willing to have the conversation. And we have special guests like this. We've had David Banner. We've had uh, um, Judge oh, Joe Brown. Joe, God, Judge Joe Brown was just amazing. Crazy wow. amazing. Yeah, he and, was. I love the episode. It was a good episode. Yeah, we had to do like, Two parts because he just wouldn't turn <laughs> <get> up. <laughs> so we loved it. And so the first, the first episode was Craig Hodges, former NBA great Craig Hodges. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, thank God for our editing team because he was in a place where the Wi Fi was just straight trash. And so, um, but we were able to keep it and hold on to it anyway. So he was amazing. And um, so this week, we, you know, we got Ananda Lewis coming up, we got Flex Anderson, Flex Alexander coming up. Uh, uh, Nanda Lewis and uh, who else? Oh, uh, this week I'm interviewing. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Kalita Smith. And oh, she- ah, yeah. Ain't that crazy, mm-hmm. Jermaine? Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend of mine that's from where my mom's from, Wilson, Carolina. That's really good. For- what happened? Uh, to meet you. He has a. Um, I- your Wi-Fi locked up. Your Wi-Fi going to He has he it. has a friend who is really good friends with Kalita Smith. Oh, okay. Well, yes. hopefully those friends will watch. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we knew her and um, and uh, Angela Means was on. You know, Felicia from Friday. Mm-hmm. She was uh, yeah. on. And uh, anyway, so we just we've been having a really good time. So I'm gonna. I think the next after that is gonna be Roy Wood Jr., the comedian from uh, the Trevor Noah yeah, Daily yeah. Show. Roy Wood so, is an excellent comedian. He's hilarious. He, he is, is hilarious. amazing. He's mm-hmm. so underrated. So right, uh, I, I, like to, I like to talk to people that, that have something to say, not just because you have a name. That's right. Yeah. 
and um and a lot of people i you know i know a lot of people and right. so i'm going to and i know a lot of their stories so i think that the world should uh get a get a dose of it as well and mm-hmm. so like flex alexander is probably one of the most generous people you've ever uh, want to meet and he's just a kind and he's been consistently a good person this whole time but he talks a lot about he gets really really real about moments when you know he went broke and uh and what he had to do and how he felt about it and who came to his i mean so yeah, and i saw he, that oh you did okay oh no uh, i think it was the own network that had a show yeah oh, oh yeah, but, yeah. But on, yeah but he goes into he goes into even deeper detail with us and so um wow. anyway so we're, we're really excited about the way that it's all going and the viewership is building and and you know i'm re- and i believe that it's something revolutionary and i believe that um this is not going to be over anytime soon so i think that having an on was important mm-hmm. and and I think that um you know David Banner and, and a lot of other people like we're learning how to like we were talking about early we're learning how to move differently because I don't I think the world is the way it is now I think I it's agree. going to be this way for a while yeah, I agree um and it's not for what anyway so I think it's going to be this way for a while yeah, and cool. I think that it's wise of us to to fig- figure out a way to make that adjustment Mm-hmm. you know cool. so i'm doing that and then we're going to take the we're going to take multiple personalities on the road in the spring okay and oh. um so we're going to be going to all like we're going to be i love north carolina so we'll be coming to like charlotte and durham and uh, okay. charlotte and um uh raleigh durham right yeah. That's us. Yeah. so we'll be coming there i love raleigh i used to work at uh charlie goodnight I was a member at Charlie yeah. Goodnight's. A member? Well, like, like, well, in terms of, well, I was on the mailing list. I like to oh, see you. <laughs> yeah. And I used to get, AJ, AJ, I used to get, I used to get, we kids and see my dad and see all these other folks and. Jermaine. I was a member. No. Yeah, they, yeah, they knew me, AJ. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll be back. We'll be back. So I mean, so we're just so now it's just about picking venues that are conducive to the current climate. You know what I mean? But we're we're coming. Right. You know what I mean? And so, and I really do believe God has really put this thing together. Like this was that's what makes it so dope. I mean, there's been so many reasons and ways that it shouldn't have worked, but it's working. And mm. so I just. I just get in the passenger seat and just say, okay, I'm yeah. just going to go with it and, and do my part. But yeah, it's been fun. And um, I, I'd love for everybody to come in and just join in. And thank you all so much for knowing and, and watching the shows because um, especially, so what's really dope is knowing that you guys watch because I always wonder like Who's what watching? caliber of people are watching. Uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. is, it, is it the critical thinkers or mm-hmm. the people that just, Want to get a CCS TV at Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> I'm balling. Yeah. See these sixty inches here? Yeah, well, you definitely there is a there is a difference. I'm there not certainly talking... is a difference. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So yeah. I'm so you guys are. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, that you guys are watching. We yeah. are. Thank you again for you know being our special guest for the evening we really do and so we want everybody our listeners and viewers to support miss aj and all her projects definitely and before we wrap guys y'all have any last words aj i actually i also had a copy of my last book i wrote sent to you too so i'm not oh this is what i wanted to tell you Uh i have got a bone to pick with you pick it because you didn't sign it he just sent a damn book no signature and shit Wait, time's out. Come on, bro. Listen, listen. Okay, so AJ, I'm not, I'm not in the DMV. I'm at my mom's in the, in, in North Carolina in this little okay. small town. Okay, uh-huh. so it came straight from the publisher through Amazon. I had, uh, it didn't even touch my hands. I couldn't even sign it. I okay, sign so what it. I, so because you didn't sign it, what I did, I kept a little note. The note. Okay, yeah. I taped it on the, and I taped it on the inside of the of the cover. Okay. Oh, okay. But you can, if you want to send, I, I don't know. I, well, you know, I can, I can send you. I'll send you an, a sign. I'll make sure I send you a signed copy. Once I get home, I'll have one. I'll sign one and send it to you. If that's okay with you. Well, 
no, don't go out of your way. I was really just okay. just, just giving you shit about it. But that's what okay. you had to do. Yeah, <laughs> give him the shit. But, yeah, that was all I was doing. But I I did expect the, I did expect it. But I said, well, at least I'll just save his little personal note mm-hmm. and just you know just tape it on the inside because I think because I, that's valuable. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's etiquette. That's the way you do it. But I yeah. get it if you weren't able to Tell do him. it. Then, but I, what I am going to do, though, I'm going to read the book, and I would love to come back on and talk about, you know, the book if I can one day. Certainly. I love to, I was like, good thing I love to read. Otherwise, this one, this one collect dust on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I love, I'm a reader. I'm a, I'm a big nerd. That's what a lot of people don't know about me. I love to read, and uh, so that's right up my alley. So I appreciate okay. it. No but th- thank you ladies and gentlemen this is a wrap so until the next time four times dope signing out all right thank you all thank you aj my pleasure my pleasure hold on, hold on aj yes <laughs>